What's up, guys? John Levesque here, and today I'm joined by Gabriel. What's up, Gabriel? Yo, yo, how's it going? So Gabriel's normally behind the camera, and uh, today wanted to bring him out front because we have a special project. Uh, we're gonna teach you how to build a PC because today we're also gonna teach Gabriel how to build a PC. So I have built several, probably hundreds of custom PCs. I used to have a little side business where I would build them for other people. And, uh, and you know, I built Zeus and the Beast, and you guys saw, uh, the, you, you saw Zeus. If you watch my desktop reveal from a few months back, oh, well, I think actually six or eight months back yeah. now. Wow, it's been a while. If you go check that out, you'll see the last computer I put together. Didn't get to watch me put it together, and so it'll be fun. I think uh, it's, it's not a process that everyone knows how to do, but it's actually a lot easier than you think. And so my goal today will be, I'll be playing cameraman and helping Gabriel through the process. I'm gonna kind of walk him through step by step and have him actually be the hands-on so that he can, you know, com uh, uh, commit it to his memory as a skill set that he'll have so he can build his next one next time. But uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna change up the scene a little bit here and we'll start talking about the parts. All right, so here I'm just gonna go over everything that I purchased and pretty much um, explain the reason behind the build and my limitations as far as finances and stuff and, and why I bought the things that I did. So uh, first of all, uh, I'd just like to point out over here the small form factor case that I bought. Uh, and that's pretty much just so I can fit it into um, a, a, port a place on my desk uh, that I have been wanting to put the larger computer that I've had that I haven't been able to. So I'm pretty sure that thing's going to fit there. Uh, and so from there, obviously, I had to go with a smaller form factor uh, motherboard, which is the Pro Series from AS Rock, uh, the B50, B550 Pro 4. And so uh, from there, I had to ask John about which power supply to get in order to run this machine because first time around, that's kind of something that I wasn't too sure about because of all the options. I kind of knew I wanted this motherboard uh, because of the, t the hype around it, but the power I was really unsure on. Uh, so I had to ask John and he said that this EVGA Supernova uh, 650 watts should be plenty of power to, to run everything here. So uh, from there, uh, we, we, John and I both were looking for a graphics card because if you uh, have any like knowledge of shopping for computer parts recently, you'll know that the graphics card is the hardest part to find just due to the shortage from uh, Bitcoin mining, I guess John tells me is what uh, people are after them for. So uh, from there, I had to get a Ryzen processor uh, because I run a lot of Adobe software and uh, people say that that is what runs it the best. I haven't tried one yet, so I'm excited to get on that. Uh, and from there, we got the 32 gigabytes of RAM from Corsair, a little RGB action going on there as well. And then uh, the Wi-Fi 6 uh, chip that I bought was is 100 bucks, and I bought it because I want to have good signal in my old house. I can't have my Wi-Fi right next to my computer, so at least for that situation, I needed some better Wi-Fi capabilities. So that should hopefully bring in my full uh, Wi-Fi signal. And so uh, the RGB fans that I got, they're pretty cheap, um, nothing too fancy, because I know I'll probably want to change them out eventually, and they just get dusty anyway. So. Um, the sound card I got is something a little bit special. Um, generally, if you're just building a PC for gaming, you don't really need one of these, but um, I actually play guitar and keyboard, and so I want to start incorporating, uh, bringing some of that music onto my computer and really hearing it at full quality, so uh, hopefully this little beast will have professional quality sound by the time we hook that up. And so yeah, from there, uh, the, the two terabyte uh, M2 drive that I got is uh, around 200 bucks and uh, basically top of the line uh, ter uh, two terabyte hard drive there. So really looking forward to using that. And so from here, we'll go ahead and check out opening some of this stuff and getting it put together. Okay, so you heard from Gabriel on the parts and now I'm gonna give you a bit of a rundown on the process. The first thing we need to do is make sure that the case is prepped and ready to receive the motherboard with a few components on it. So we're gonna take off this front panel, this backside panel, uh, both of them off the case, and then we're gonna go ahead and, and slot in our power supply here uh, because this is a unique case. It has a bit of a unique design that I'll show you where it kind of hides the power supply from the rest of the case so that the display looks a lot better. A lot of new cases are doing this, 
where you're keeping the power supply out of sight and running those lines minimally kind of behind the scenes so that, you know, things look nice because we all do RGB and have rainbow and, and lights and all, or all sorts of cool stuff happening inside of our case that we want people to see. So I think let's go ahead and get hands on. We'll get these, uh, these panels off the case. We'll get the motherboard out. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to seat the processor and the RAM. And then we'll actually go ahead and put the motherboard into the case here once we've gone ahead and, uh, and done that. Because it's a little bit easier to put those things on the motherboard outside of the case rather than dealing with you know trying to do that all in this limited space. All right, let's go. All right, so this is the processing unit. If you've never seen a CPU, this is all it is. It's just this little silicone chip and it's got a ton of these pins on it, hundreds of them. And uh, that's actually what communicates with your motherboard. Uh, you can see there's a receiving unit here and it has a matching pattern where it's looking to take all those pins. Now, uh, one thing I wanna point out is uh, these processors, on all the edges, you'll notice that they're blank, except for one. One has this little gold arrow, okay? Now that's important to pay attention to because on the motherboard, there's also in one of the corners going to be an arrow. And so you can see here on this motherboard, it's actually this corner right here. And so if you were to set this processing unit in place how you thought you would, where it says Ryzen right at you, that would actually be incorrect. And if you tried to close down uh, the, the clamp here that keeps it in place, it would actually bend all those pins. And so this processor actually has to turn sideways. And then you can see it just drops right into place perfectly. There was no resistance. It didn't float at all. It just accepted it. And now that we can feel it down nice and, and tight, we're gonna go ahead and clamp down this arm that then holds it in place. And now, now we can't pull the processor out of its receiving unit there. Okay, so on Gabriel's motherboard here, uh, in the book we did a little bit of research and we saw that we have to set these awesome, look at them, nice and white with RGB on the end, they are so nice. We have to set these RAM sticks in slot A1, which is the first one on the board, and then also B1, which is the third one on the board. If you were to have four sticks of RAM or even three, you could do them one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. But when you only have two, you have to do them in the first and third slot, A1, B1. Also, uh, check your motherboard specifications. For this one, you actually have to have two of the exact same RAM sticks. It will not accept different size or different speed. And so that's a good thing to keep in mind. It's something we knew for Gabriel. That's why we got him two exact identical 16 gig sticks. So this thing will fly. All right, so the first thing we have to do is there's these two motherboard guy, uh, guards here, which uh, are actually gonna line up with our screws on our heat sink. And so we gotta take off these guards and then we're going to actually apply a little bit of extra thermal paste. You can see that this one comes with a factory applied layer. We never trust that tiny little layer of thermal paste. So we have some really nice uh, high-end thermal grease here. We'll go ahead and grease up the, the chip itself and then we'll apply the heat sink to it. And you can take a look as we go ahead and put that in, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Gabriel will probably hesitate to push it down into the motherboard as hard as it needs to be, but that's all right, we'll, we'll coach him through it. So uh, now we're seating the cooling unit for the processor, and for this you wanna make sure you tighten it down evenly, distribute it around, uh, around the unit while you're tightening it down. All right, so the last piece that has to go on the motherboard before we install it in the case is the M2 hard drive. Now, in the past, the hard drive would be a piece we would put in later. It would connect with one of these SATA cords. Well, not anymore. Now the M2 drive goes right on the motherboard directly because it's actually like a RAM stick. That's how they, fig they figured out how to store stuff in memory long-term in a similar format to RAM. And so it's super fast. It's gonna help Gabriel with his 4K editing and make this machine way faster than a typical drive. All 
All right, so our motherboard is now going to go and sit down into the case just like this. Now, you're going to know always how that is because your your connector ports here, your USBs, right, your audio jacks, your internet connector, they're all going to line up to the back of the machine exactly. We're going to we have a connector plate actually from the motherboard that we'll throw in there which is going to house all of these perfectly. And then if you look inside, uh, there's a set of screws here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that will actually all line up with holes that are here on the motherboard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And our eighth one is up here that I missed. And so we'll go ahead and set those in. We have the risers in place. We'll put our, our plate for all of our connections and we'll put this baby in. Okay, so we've got everything up here hooked up, and we've got uh, basically yeah, everything connected down there that we need to get connected that came with the case. And now we're gonna throw in the fans. And so I told Gabriel that one thing you never ever skimp on in a PC is your power supply. It's, it's a backbone to your machine. And what's bad about really bad power supplies is they won't just fail on you, so you have to replace them. No, they'll continue to run and they'll just give the wrong voltages. And that can be really harmful to your system over time. That can fry other components. And so uh, I had them go with this EVGA Supernova. It's, you know, 50 bucks more or so of similar products in its class but it is worth every penny because EVGA is a great company. They stand behind their product often. And, uh, and, and this machine, I, I've used these in the past and they last forever. All right, so that little modular power supply had a uh, motherboard cable that was this long. Uh, so luckily I had a spare computer that uh, we had kicking around and I was able to pull this cable out and, uh, and let Gabriel use that one so the project can continue. We got a new one on order for me. Gabriel's running a little short on time and so trying to film everything and walk him through it, unfortunately is not gonna work out for his, um, his time budget and so we're going to go ahead here and just rock through. So this is the video card, the radio, I'm sorry, the uh, G4 1650. Uh, it has a PCI Express slot. That's this top slot right here on the board. Uh, and so this card is gonna go ahead and pop into place there. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that we're lining up our left side here. To, that's gonna be a good guide for us. Also, we can look down inside and make sure that our teeth, there's like a groove there where a tooth lines up. And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and when we have that all in place, we will then go ahead and line it up and push down. So there's half the pressure and there's the full pressure and we hear the pop. Okay, so we're gonna run through the final checklist here. We just finished wiring up the fan, so we just double check. We have motherboard power, we have CPU power. Our, mother, our uh, CPU fan is hooked up. We just hooked up all of our external fans. Uh, sound card has USB. Wi-Fi has USB. All of our connectors are set up for our motherboard properly. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Time to fire it up and see what happens. One is on, zero is off. Here we go. Yes. Yes! <laughs> Success! Looks good. Looks beautiful. Awesome. Time to get Windows installed and get this baby home to my desk. All right, my friends. So we have built Gabriel's PC. It is running. It is in his home. He has his own beastly machine. 
We got to walk you through quite a few parts of how to put this together. I know we didn't get to cover every single step in detail, so if you have questions about building a PC, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know if you wanna see a specific step in the process. I do have a couple extra PCs, and I would be happy to show you or walk you through or send you a guide on how to get that specific piece done. All right. That's it from me, you guys. Much love. Go ahead and click like and click subscribe so that you don't miss another video. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one.